Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and this is the first video in a series I like to call You Are Using the Wrong Engine. In this video, I'm taking you on a deep dive into the engine offerings of the 2019 Audi R8. Let's go! Alright, before we get into the video, a lot of YouTubers spend a lot of time asking for subs and likes and not a lot of time thanking the existing subscribers and supporters, so I want to do things a little bit differently. First of all, thank you so much for clicking on this video, and to all of those beautiful people who have decided to subscribe, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my videos. Each and every one of you mean the world to me, so thank you very much. Okay, there is a very annoying problem with Need for Speed Heat, and that is that it's almost impossible to know for sure that you've built the fastest version of your car before spending countless hours getting enough money to buy every single engine and then testing each one of those. The game doesn't show you if the engine swap will actually yield better results. Actually, it doesn't even tell you if swapping the engine will make you more torque or give you a better 0-60 to time, because each engine option is kitted out with its own series of parts. One engine option may show you that it produces more horsepower than another, but of course it will because it has a better ECU, cooling system, and exhaust. Each engine option has a different level of components, so comparing them as if they were fully built is not possible. Not only that, but the engines are hundreds of thousands of dollars, so how do you know which engine to start building your car with without wasting a bunch of money? Well luckily for you, I've done it all for the 2019 Audi R8. I literally bought every single engine and proceeded to build each one with the highest tier parts possible, and then I repeatedly tested each engine on two different races and recorded the results. Here's the setup. I tested each engine with all Ultimate Plus parts, the dual turbo, and the 5x3 pound NOS option. Before I get too far into this, I know you guys are going to tell me in the comments that some races are better for superchargers or that I should have tested it without the NOS, but that's not how most of us race, so just chill on that. To balance the NOS for each engine, I use the NOS on the exact same parts of each race every single time. I also ran each race two or more times to make sure my driving skills weren't affecting the outcome too much. I only recorded the time if I had a super clean race, and so I raced more than 45 times trying to make sure my results were legit. I realized after doing this that there is no perfect way to figure out this information, but my tests are about as close as you can get. Let's get into the results. As of right now, the Audi R8 has 9 different motor options, 2 V12 motors, 2 V10s, 3 V8s, a V6, and a flat 12. If you picked your engine based on the potential horsepower, you might be disappointed because one of the best performing motors was actually the 5.0 liter V8, which only offers 1215 horsepower compared to the max horsepower of this car, which is 1239. This 5.0 liter V8 outperformed the field when I tested it on the race called Aardvark. Now I realize every race offers its own set of challenges, but Aardvark offers a ton of downhill and flat speed with sharp corners in between and minimal uphill inclines. You spend a lot of time in the higher gears on this race, and for some reason, the 5.0 liter V8 responded very well. It was the only engine I was able to run a time faster than 450 on this race. A very close second on Aardvark was the 5.2 liter V12. I was able to run a 450.8, which as you can see is only 4 tenths of a second faster than the third place motor, the 5.2 liter V10. I'm willing to admit that 4 tenths of a second could have been decided by my driving skills and not the motor, so as far as I'm concerned, there's really a 3-way tie for second place on this course between the 3.9 liter V8, the 5.2 liter V12, and the 5.2 liter V10 motors, with the 5.0 liter V8 clearly having the advantage. Now what's strange about these results is that while the 5.0 liter V8 motor performed the best on Aardvark, it was near the bottom on the race Arion. Arion has a couple of long straights, but a lot of the course is littered with uphill inclines and semi-sharp turns. I spend a lot of time shifting between gears 4 and 5 when I'm using this 8-speed gearbox. This tells me that the 5.0 liter engine might be better at going straight than it is coming out of the corners. 
It must have better top end than its counterparts, but lacks the ability to accelerate out of turns and up inclines. The best performing motor on Arion was actually another V8 motor, the 3.9 liter to be exact. It ran a 304.1. Now the second place motor on that course was only 5 tenths of a second behind that, and that was the 5.2 liter V10. Again, because 5 tenths of a second is such a small difference, I'm willing to say it was a tie. And actually, it was a three-way tie between the 3.9 liter V8, the 5.2 liter V10, and the 6.2 liter V8. So now that I have the data, how do we select the winning motor for the Audi R8? Well, I picked these two courses because they each offer a little bit of everything when it comes to the types of courses in this game. So to pick the fastest motor, I'm gonna take the top four performers at Aardvark and the top four performers at Arion and cross-reference them to see if there's any overlap. So here's the top fours at Arion and at Aardvark. All right, so the point of all this testing was to find out which motor was the most well-rounded motor for the Audi R8. And the 5.2 liter V10 was tied for first at Arion and tied for second at Aardvark. However, the 3.9 liter V8 was also tied at Arion and tied for second at Aardvark. Both of these motors are very well-rounded options for the Audi R8, and I would be comfortable running either one. However, the 3.9 liter V8 will actually set you back $438,000, and the 5.2 liter V10 is actually the stock motor. The 5.2 liter V10 is definitely the best option, which is super funny considering it is the stock motor that comes with the car. I did all this testing for absolutely no reason, but it was a great learning experience and I plan to do it with more cars in the future. So stay tuned and make sure you leave me a comment with the car that you want me to test next. Thanks for watching, Trigger out.